Welcome back. Now, the Two Kings concert was also used um, um, to launch your new album. Um, very intriguing title. It's called A Long Way to the Beginning. Yes. How did that title come about? Uh, well, um, the, the, I, I, I've seen um, our progress in Africa up to this point as a beginning of the awakening of young people. You know, being interested again in the politics that, you know, because for 20, 25 years, the young people of Nigeria, you know, and Africa in general were completely detached from politics. Mm -hmm. People like me were considered crazy when we wanted people to be involved. But the hardship of the new millennium, with all the promises they held in the old millennium, you know, because our government, you know, they always think that year 2000 will not come, that not everybody here is Christian, that and everybody believes that the world will end in year 2000. <laughs> so the government started lying. Food and light and this for all in 2000. Uh, vision 2010. When 2010 came, and the vision, the NASA is vision 2020. <laughs> anyway, so the fact that people are feeling the hardship now, and the only way to affect that, to have an effect on what affects you, is to partake in the politics of it. You know, so I see this as a beginning, and you know, we've come a long way to get to this beginning. And even for Afrobeat music, where my music is today, my brother's music, fella's music, you know, Afrobeat music has come a long way. And there's a new beginning for it with a movie coming out about my dad, with the Broadway play, so many artists influenced by him all over the world, you know, and all the thousands of Afrobeat bands, you know, that are playing all over the world today. It's a testament that Afrobeat has come to a new beginning as well, you know. Now, this album was produced by um, Robert Glasper. He's a Grammy winning jazz pianist and music producer. How did that collaboration come about? Uh, you know, everybody wants to work with Shion Kuti. <laughs> <laughs> Not to sound too big headed. And I said that to Peace Ruben. But how, how did you meet and you know, begin a conversation? Because you know, wanting to work with Shion Kuti, I could want to work with Shion Kuti and not have access. You know what no, I mean? I think our managers are very good friends. Okay. Nicole and Anno. Nicole is his manager and Anno is mine. I think they met and they were like, it would be great if our artists collaborated. So this is actually a management vision. Um, and he came all the way from the States because we recorded the album in Belgium. Okay. We spoke on the phone one time before he came and I met him in the studio for the first time. How did his um, work with you as a producer of the album, do you think, ultimately impact on the output as well as, you know, um, what you ended up with, really? Well, you know, working with a great musician like Robert, you know, is to, basically what you want to accomplish is to get a bit of his DNA in your in your music, basically, you know, I felt that my compositions as they were, were, you know, I come from a very, with my music, I come from a very hard place, you know, and I didn't need to just come and dazzle some soft dust, you know, just to give it some color and that brightness, you know, that comes with R&B music like he makes, mm -hmm. you know, so we could be in the studio and also he's a great pianist. And I needed somebody to do really good piano parts for solos, you know. But you play too, don't you? Yes, I do, but you know, I'm more of a saxophonist than I am a pianist. Yeah, but he's, a, you know, he's just a great pianist. You know? So while he was in the studio, I could give him some lines you know, that he could work on and do some solos like my dad used to do, you know, which for me was really nice. The song that has sort of generated a lot of buzz around is IMF um, for obvious reasons. Yes. Um, you don't seem to have problems with obscenities in your music. Uh, art is all about expression. You know, as soon as you begin to censor yourself, you know, as an artist, you have lost whatever it is that made you an artist in the first place. An artist with censorship has become a tool. You have become a tool for other people to use. You're no longer an artist, you know. So, you know, artist, being an artist is all about non-conformity. One of the greatest artists of all time for me has been Mozart. And even though he died broken in an unmarked grave because he refused to toe the line. I felt that he captures, his life story captures what it means to be an artist. And he's not immortal, of course. Yes, he's completely he immortal. Happen. And more famous than all his contemporaries that toe the line, you know. Uh, so to be an artist is to completely express yourself without regard to uh, sensibilities of anybody. Yes. That's what you're saying. Yes, I was going to say to society, but yes, sensibilities of anybody is more accurate. 
What does IMF mean? It, in my song, it means yeah. international money. Because that is the real meaning of the company. It is not international monetary fund. Because the fact that they say it's a monetary fund, that's why I don't trust the name. Because there's only one kind of fund. If I call my friend, I need some funds, man. What do you think I need? It's money. So when people say, oh, we are the monetary fund, you know, and especially they don't create policies for Europe and America to follow, just for developing nations, you know, you realize that um, they are not at our, in our best interest. Let us take a break. When we return, we speak politics and political activism and discuss why Sheung has found it necessary to take to the streets over the last few years. Don't go away. <laughs>